first, uh, thank you, President Porchenko, for this very warm welcome to myself, my delegation that's traveling with me. That this is an important stop for me at this time in particular. Uh, as you've acknowledged, uh, recently appointed Ambassador Kurt Volker as a special representative on Ukraine, and I appreciate the accommodation you have made that will allow him to spend the next couple of days here uh, becoming much more deeply familiar with the perspective of yourself and other members of your government and the Ukrainian people uh, regarding this very challenging issue. Uh, Ambassador Volker is a very capable, well-known diplomat, and I, and I appreciate Ambassador Volker taking this role on for us as well. I think it is important to be very clear on what our goals are, the United States goals are, with respect to the situation here. And first and foremost, uh, it is to restore Ukraine's territorial sovereignty and integrity. Uh, the United States has already contributed more than $600 million since the beginning of this crisis. Uh, we also think it's very important that we seek the safety and the security of all Ukrainian citizens, regardless of their ethnicity, their nationality, or their religion. But this is a fundamental element to Ukraine's sovereignty as well, and the protection of all Ukrainian citizens. I think as long as the parties commit themselves to these goals, uh, I am confident that we can make progress. I've been very clear in my discussions with Russian leadership on more than one occasion that it is necessary for Russia to take the first steps to de-escalate the situation in the east part of Ukraine, in particular by respecting the ceasefire, by pulling back uh, the heavy weapons and allowing the OSCE observers to carry out their responsibilities. Now, this is necessary for us to make any any uh, move, uh, movement in particular. We are disappointed by the lack of progress under the Minsk agreement, and that is why we are appointing a special representative to put additional emphasis. We will be coordinating carefully with the Normandy uh, members as well, along with yourself and with the Russian Federation government to see if we cannot make progress and make progress in a more prompt fashion as well. We do call on Russia to honor its commitments that were made under the Minsk Accords and to exercise influence over the separatists in the region whom they do hold complete control over. And we call on them again to immediately call on their proxies to cease the violence that is ongoing in uh, East Ukraine. Again, we call on them to allow the monitors full access uh, to all areas to perform their mission not only along the line of contact, but ultimately along the border itself. Uh, the U.S. and EU sanctions on Russia will remain in place until Moscow reverses the actions that triggered these particular sanctions. During our discussions today, we also had very useful exchanges on economic reforms, and I want to recognize tremendous progress that has been made uh, by the, uh, the Ukrainian government in reforms over the past three years now, and it's evident in economic performance as well, which I find quite encouraging. I know that there's more to do, and I know that you are committed to continuing these reforms to strengthen Ukrainian security, but also uh, economic performance as well. Uh, I know that Ukraine is committed to implementing the obligations to the IMF, including a pension reform, land reform, privatization of state-owned enterprises, and improving corporate governance. And we, we spoke uh, extensively about steps necessary to make Ukraine a very attractive destination for foreign direct investment. And I, I know you're committed to improving that situation. And we also discussed the importance of implementing the anti-corruption reforms, because that, too, is an important element of attracting foreign direct investment and more business activity, which will create more jobs for Ukrainian citizens and grow the economy. Uh, this includes the important work Ukraine is doing to reform the justice sector, uh, Ukraine's commitment to selecting Supreme Court justices of the highest integrity and professionalism and creating the anti-corruption court. Uh, these are essential first steps in reforming the judiciary and has all too often uh, not been progressed. And I know, and you expressed your very uh, sincere and uh, 
commitment to progressing uh, the actual uh, creation of the court and the appointment of judges with the highest integrity. <clears throat> we know there are challenges to moving these reforms forward, but they are critical to the success of Ukraine for the future and really creating the circumstances for Ukraine to maintain as a viable economy standing on its own, uh, an important partner to its European neighbors, but an important uh, country for the rest of the world as well. Uh, I'm quite encouraged by the situation that I see here in Ukraine, the progress that's been made, uh, and I know that with these reforms, once they're in place, uh, Ukraine will be a very attractive place uh, for business investment elsewhere. I do want to note that this marks the 25th year of diplomatic relations between the United States of America and an independent and sovereign Ukraine. Uh, America is very proud of the ties that we have and the profound friendship that has developed. And Mr. President, let me say personally, I'm very proud of the friendship we've developed through our multiple telephone contacts, our meeting in Washington, D.C. when President Trump hosted you at the White House, and this very warm welcome you've extended to me today. We have a lot of difficult 